Hello humans, hello humans. This is dad, just not your dad. And today we're gonna to make a video on making probiotic uh, lactobacillus borderi yogurt. So we're gonna show you everything we need um, to start. First, you're gonna need the microbe starter, which is uh, a product from BioGaia called Gastrus, and uh, comes in tablet form. You can get it at BioGaia just like that, biogaiausa.com. Okay, uh, we're gonna need a, a, a glass to crush the tablets. We're gonna need a mixing bowl and a whisk. And we're gonna need some half and half, one quart. This is a half gallon, but I'll measure it out. Um, on the half and half, you wanna make sure of two things. One, it's gotta be ultra pasteurized, and two, only two ingredients, milk, cream, that's it. If it has anything else in it, it's got preservatives, don't use it. Um, if you can't find this particular brand, which I like, then uh, look for organic. Okay, uh, next we're gonna need or, uh, inulin powder. This is basically a vegetable fiber, like this is made from uh, uh, Jerusalem artichoke. And uh, that is essentially microbe food. So we're going to mix in a couple tablespoons of that. Then we're going to need our jars. We're going to have eight jars, clean jars and caps. And then we're going to need our yogurt machine. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then we're going to need one uh, cup of either filtered water or uh, bottled water. Don't want to use tap water because it's got chlorine, and uh, fluoride, stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to... First thing we want to do is open our BioGaia tablets, and they look just like this, and we're going to use 10. So start with just a few, and all you got to do is just take a nice sturdy glass, just press down, and it pulverizes. I think my glass was a little damp, so it's sticking to it. I'm just gonna brush that off. So, note to self, don't use a damp glass. Um, we'll do three more. So that's four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna throw four more in. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. So again, just take a glass, push down, and pulverize it, and they crush very easily. I've seen people get this pretty complicated. They'll use mortar and pestle. They'll put it in a bag and smash it, and that's really not necessary. Um, so just a, a good glass. And then crush it in the uh, in the bowl, and it should be pretty good. This my glass got a little bit damp. All right, so there. All right, so we got that. <clears throat> so let's put these away. Okay, and we're gonna take a little bit of half and half. And since I bought a half gallon, I'm gonna measure out a quart. And you can get this stuff for like, you know, three to four dollars per quart. Okay, so we're gonna just take maybe a little bit and mix it in. And the goal here is just to get it kind of like a slurry. And get it all nice and mixed in before pouring the entire thing in. All right, so that is pretty good. Oh, don't use the blender because a blender will kill the microbes. So just do it by hand. Now we're gonna take two tablespoons of inulin powder. You can find this on any website. Uh, Cultured Food Life has all this stuff, but most of the popular retail sites have it as well. And a bag of this, oh, by the way, the, um, the BioGaia Gastrus uh, uh, starter, the um, Lactobacillus rotori, it's two strains. That'll probably cost you about 30 bucks. Good news, you only have to buy it one time. 
because what you're going to do is you're going to make subsequent batches from your current batch. All right, so a note on the inulin powder. Don't just dump it in because it'll get clumpy and you'll have like dumplings. You don't want that. And so just kind of shake it as you stir. And that fully distributes it. And again, the inulin powder is providing uh, food for the microbes. And I'm running out. I've had this bag for almost a year. So, oh, the inulin powder will also cost you about $30. But you don't have to buy it very often. How many can this be So two tablespoons of inulin powder. And we're good with that. All right, now we're just gonna pour the rest of the half and half in. Uh, one more word on the half and half, do not use low fat. You want this fat, the fat is good. The microbes love it, you'll love it. So um, yeah, make sure that you use just regular half and half. Okay, next step, we're gonna fill the jars. We're gonna put these um, up about halfway. So that what we're gonna get is about, well, a little more than halfway. I think they're six ounce jars, but you wanna put a ballpark four ounces in each jar. And then what I like to do is stir it up a little bit before doing the rest of them. So pretty simple. And just even them out. And that's that. Okay, next we got our yogurt machine. Let's talk about that. Uh, this is a yogurt machine that I found by Sutec. You can get this anywhere. I got this on Home Depot's website, <laughs> funny enough, but um, just Google search it. You can expect to pay between $35 to $50 or so, depending on where you get it, all right? So first thing we're gonna do, before we put the jars in, we're gonna put in a cup of water just to cover the bottom. And the, the goal of that is to just distribute the heat evenly. And I kind of learned that the hard way because I had some batches where some jars were too hot and other jars weren't hot enough. Um, so then we're gonna put our jars in. So we'll just cap these guys. And the reason these look a little different is because these white caps are the original jars that came with the machine. The ones that are clear are extra jars that I bought, and I recommend you buy some extra jars too because uh, I like to have a couple batches on hand at any given time. So we're just going to load those in. Super simple. Um, all right, now the machine is... I've seen people have complaints about this machine, like online, uh, other videos, and I don't think they read the directions, and it is a little confusing. But the way it starts is, when you first plug it in, let me, let me uh, restart it. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit function, and then that's going to give us the temperature. Temperature light's going to go on, then we're going to use the, air, the uh, plus and minus to adjust, adjust the temp. And then, then we hit start, and that really should also say set, but that's what you're really doing. When you hit start, you're really setting the temperature, all right? And then once that gets done, then it's gonna go to the time uh, side of it, and then we're gonna set the time up to 36 hours. And I'll explain that in a minute. So I'm gonna hit function, and it starts at 108. I'm gonna drop that down to body temperature, because this bacteria loves body temperature at 98. So we hit start. And that sets the temperature, and now we're gonna do time. And I wanna move that up to 36 hours. And I'll explain that in just a second. And that's it. So now the machine is running and it's on autopilot. And the reason we wanna do 36 hours is because this particular microbe doubles every three hours. 
And so one becomes two, two becomes four, it's exponential growth. And if you, if you would you know, chart that out like on a spreadsheet, what you'll find is by the time you get to like hour 30, it's starting to look like a hockey stick. It's going straight up. And what that ends up giving us from a starter of uh, two, 20 billion, because they're 2 billion per tablet, we have 10 tablets, so that's 20 billion. We end up with about 200 billion per jar. So do the math on that times eight, it's a lot. So that's what we want is super high counts. I've seen guys out there doing videos on this and how to make it and saying, you only need to do 12 hours. Don't listen to that because um, you need the full 36. And so some people ask, why don't you want to go more than 36? Because there's a law of diminishing return. At some point, and, and a guy figured this out, and I'll tell you who that is in a second, but by the time you get to 36, it starts to max out. So if you go to 48, what's going to happen is you're going to end up getting die-off because just like any environment, when you get too many of one thing, like too many deer in a forest or you know other things going on, then uh, overpopulation, then you start to run out of food and you're going to get die-off. So it's actually detrimental to let it go beyond 36 hours because then microbes are starting to to die. And we don't want that. We want peak uh, amount in every jar. Okay, so you're going to let this go for 36 hours. That is exactly a day and a half. So if you start this at 6 p.m. on a Sunday, for instance, it'll be done at 6 p.m. on Monday night. Very simple. A day and a half. Uh, maybe set an alarm on your phone or something because you want to make sure as soon as it's done, you want to take it out, dry off the jars, put them in the fridge because you want to stop that culturing, stop that that multiplying and the cool temperature will do that. It'll slow it down. Um, as far as I can see, they stay good in the fridge for a couple of weeks. Never had an issue with that. Uh, the guy that really deserves credit for this is Dr. William Davis. So all kudos to uh, Dr. Davis. I encourage you to look at his website, um, which is drdavisinfinitehealth.com and check out his YouTube channel. He's got some really great stuff. Um, I've adopted the, pro, the self-made probiotic uh, lifestyle as well as his wheat-free and grain-free, sugar-free lifestyle. And I've seen just great results. I think you will too. Uh, so I guess that's about it. It's pretty simple. Um, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, this is dad, just not your dad, signing off. And I hope you found this video informative. And I would like to thank you for watching.